Hi everyone, I'm Sandra Alexa here and I'm with co-author of Game Changer, Michael Albert Hellier. And what I'm going to do, yeah great, you have a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to have some questions for him. I'm going to interview him about Game Changer, what the process was for him. And uh, hopefully that will give you an awareness of where we came from because we each did an interview okay uh, so first of all Michael tell me a little bit about you what's your background your experience and and how you why at this particular time in your life did you feel comfortable in writing this in a meaningful way so I'm first gonna state that I'm not quite as eloquent as uh, Sandra is so um, I want to start by saying that I kind of lived what you would consider a regular life. Um, did the work thing, the, ran a business of my own for 40 years. And um, over that lifetime interacted in a real way. This, so, so where I'm coming from is real life experiences that everyday people are going through and struggling with and it happened to me so throughout my business career one of the things that mattered most to me was that we all make mistakes right and and the deal was for me was not to make the same one twice and so I've made some mistakes and um, you know they've been major ones within my life and I know other people have shared similar experiences so that, I came to a place in my life where I think it matters that I take the practical part of what happened to me and write it down in an, in an easy to read format so that perhaps others out there reading this book will go, that makes sense to me, I better try and avoid that or I better try and do that because a lot of the things that I'm suggesting or, or we've suggested in this book, but written from my point of view, will or could save you an awful lot of grief, of energy, of uh, finances, uh, your sense of well-being. I mean, it could, when you go through a 30-year marriage and it ends badly for whatever the number of reasons there are, the devastation that follows on a personal level, on a family level, everything you've built up over that time, financial level, your emotional sense of well-being, even who you are, you're essentially starting over after 30 years. And I just want to tell you, it's, it's not easier. You've got to be in a pretty bad space to say that after all of that time, you start over and it gets better for you. Um, so I found myself struggling with real world problems after 30 years trying to figure out if I even could date again and bringing you know other people into your life and oh my gosh it's there's a lot of challenge there and there was for me so essentially you're going to hear honest real truth from what happened to me in my life my family I grew up my family broke up when I was 16 which was um, challenging to say the least and then through my own breakup 30 years later and my family's experiences now were where where all three of my children wound up breaking up it was a cascading effect like throwing a pebble into a pond the ripple effect is horrendous so this book can help that prevent that from happening to you and if you could find something that would help you put the odds in your favor to avoid that catastrophic loss in your life. Um, I think you'd be wise to do it. So hopefully that helps a little bit. And Excellent. Okay, and so how long did this book take to write and what was the process? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to tell you that it probably started formatting when I was 16 and my mom and dad broke up. So. Um, probably laid dormant for all those years while I tried to rebalance and sort myself so that I could walk through life in a meaningful way with my head up and my shoulders back. 
And then when it happened to me 30 years after my marriage, I think um, that was the catalyst. And I, I never, you know, there's no real support system out there for guys. There's no real way to say what's going on in your life. You just suck it up and keep moving forward. So at some point, and I believe that, you know, Sandra came into my life for a reason, and, and she was the, the impetus that said, hey, we can do this, because I was carrying a message, and I felt that, you know, that, like it could help so many other people. And, uh, and then living, you know, like my brother, who, who I, of course, were only 18 months apart, and um, he lives in the, in, 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 you know, in the kind of a utopia, a marriage utopia, that, that we would all hope would happen to us when we say, I do, when we say those vows. And so that was sort of there, and I thought, boy, that's a better way to go. And I had made all these mistakes the first time, and again, I'm hoping that anyone who reads this book, you don't have to make them again. So um, it probably took about, of actual writing, three years for me, and, and it was, for me, because I worked with my hands, I, I ran a, a mechanical contracting company, which was heating, air conditioning, um, HVAC contra contractor, um, more used to working with my hands and, and having to sit and put all these thoughts down on paper every morning. And Sandra was good at that because she kept me to the schedule. Probably about three years, two and a half, three years of something completely different. But something inside said it was worthwhile. And uh, yeah, yeah, it needed to be said. There's, there's so much in there that can help. Right. So that sounds good. So really, that's how long it took. So why did you write the book? And maybe you said a little bit about it, yeah, but I probably. just want to stick with the questions because I think the why for, for you is really important. It's like it was always like we talked about because you're a businessman, it's the investment and a lot. Well, I personally think that it's the biggest single investment that you'll make in your life. I, I I think in terms of, of building your own little kingdom with a solid partner that's headed in the same direction as you, that's a good person at, at their core, uh, you know, someone you can count on. Well, that's, to me, a really good recipe for a, su a successful life. But when that doesn't happen and you find out that you're, you know, not on the same page after that amount of time. Everything you've built gets torn down. It gets torn down for you, for the family you've built, for anything you've done financially, emotionally, your your bond, your connection with that other individual. It gets broken apart. So it's tough. It's a tough way to go. Right. I like what you used to say about <clears throat> If there's any red flags or deal breakers, what do you do? Put your what on and run? Well, yeah, yeah. you put your running shoes on and you don't just walk away from that person. You run, but the idea is to, before it gets to that point where you're just head over heels in love and you're going, oh man, I, this is the right person forever. I mean, how much really do you know about that person? How similar are they? Once you look past the... God, that's a pretty girl, or that's a handsome guy, or uh, I like his wallet, or whatever it is that you find about that person. Um, mostly it's on the outside, right? Because that's what makes the initial attraction. But how really well do you know yourself? How well do you know that person? How compatible are you when you look 30 years down the road? Right. And that's when it's really going to matter, because now you've probably got kids, you've probably built your own little empire, you've probably counted on that person to be there when you retire, you see, all these things you've done, and it changes, right? So. Yeah, and th there was something else I was thinking, oh, I know, you have a really good uh, philosophy that I have never thought about, which I shared, Michael's philosophy is about, what does the book do for somebody with the questions, because the whole first chapter is self-discovery. Well, you know, when you sit with two people, right, and you're in that, like, gaga stage, and you're, maybe one's a little shyer than the other, maybe one's not quite as brave, and, and there are some really hard questions that need to be asked, some questions you need answers to, and you need even to answer it for yourself. 
So you can look at the other person and you're going through the, the interactive exercises in the book and they're asking some hard questions, some real questions. And you don't have to take blame for it. You can say, hey, the book says we better talk about it. The book's right. asking that question. So it's not me. Like I'm, I'm just going through the same process you are. And these are uncomfortable, some of these. You know, especially if your partner is, or you, or like you're going, oh, well, I don't really want to answer that because I'm trying to hide something. This book is not about hiding stuff. This book is about getting to know the real truth about what's going on. Because, like I've said to you before, this is a huge investment in your life. All that time, you'll never get that time back. All that history you've built up with another individual over the years, you'll never get that back when it's taken away. Extended families are gone. Everything changes, right? And then you bring new people into your life. And then they come with their own experiences and their kids and their in-laws and so on and you have to be able to adapt to all that and you have no history with that and it's not easy you know you're still trying to run your life and, and so yeah it's uh, the book asks some really tough questions and it makes you look and you have to get down to, down to the core you know I like that I like that for the bottom, because the bottom line is there's two really important words you say it's about truth and it's about transparency okay and you're right sometimes it's uncomfortable and one of the examples would be is finances is always a big one okay and there's some tough questions that you have to answer and you have your partner answer too that would be a big one there's okay. questions that are about long term right you know like how do you see yourself 30 years from now where are you going to be how would you love i mean if, if you like to knit and i want to go sail the world and you're a homebody and i want to travel and i mean that's a recipe to end that relationship down the road when you're finally in a position financially that you might be able to do it you should know those things right that's a really good point, and that's part of the self-discovery. Those are some of the questions, because when you're 20, you might be a little bit different when you're 40, but initially, you need to start l learning about yourself, discovering And this yourself. book forces you to look yeah. ahead a little bit too, right? Yeah. It's not just, I know that we're, we're living in the moment, and I understand this is the only moment we have, but trust me, if, if 30 years down the road, that person turns out to be not who you thought they were, that's not an easy road. Okay, so what are your hopes and wishes for people who read it? How is it going to help? Them? Well, I re my hope is, is that they would avoid the mistakes that I made, the pitfalls, the, essentially the tragedy of what happens when, when you're, you go through the devastation of that breakup. And so there are a lot of steps and processes that I overlooked. I was busy running a business and, you know, that consumed me. And, and I had a lot of other interests. I was training for the Ironman, and that consumed me. And I wound up coaching minor hockey for 15 years, and that consumed me. And, you know, perhaps, you know, there's, there, there needs to be balance in your life, and, and this will wake you up to what happens if you don't. It's like a car. If you don't change the oil, you can run it for a while, and you can probably run it for longer than you think. But eventually that's going to cost you. You're going to have to fix that engine, right? So this is a way to check and balance all the way through to make sure there's time for your, your partner. There's time for this. There's time for that. And, and, and the recognition that needs to happen between, you know, you're a good person and I'm a good person and let's communicate more effectively. And is if you don't, there's lots of things that happen down the road. So you stop it before it gets down there. I, so yeah. that's what I hope, Sam. Yeah, I also think one of the things is, because you went through the process of your own divorce, how you were very confused, it was very chaotic, you were working, and so there's a whole process under, it's like a business, this is an investment on things that you need to think about and things that you need to do if this is happening. And it makes you clear on what it is you need to ask when you're going into a relationship. And think about. So essentially for me, it's, it was about trying to prevent the breakup down the road. Yeah. And, and so trying to do these steps in, in awarenesses and so on that might help prevent that. Because if you think it's easier, 
if you think you're going to break this family up and then invest in another family down the road, you think that's an easier step than working on the relationship that you've already built, you know, half a lifetime with or a considerable amount of time with, it isn't, right? And so this is designed to help. Now there's still at the end of the rainbow if, you know, inevitably there's some marriages, there are partnerships that can't be saved and they are going to break up. There's a lot of practical steps that help you to come out of this fair, come out of it with, with your head held high and, and not being taken advantage of financially through the legal system because you haven't got the time to sort it through properly. There are steps you need to take. Yeah. Okay. And they're covered in here. Well, that's really a good point because the whole process of uncoupling, uncoupling with truth, uncoupling with integrity, not only helps the two adults involved, but is also very important for any children that are within that biological family. Okay, so what can people expect when they, when they read this book? If you can take them a little bit deeper. Well, I, I, I reckon you're going to figure out, we're asking you some really, really, um, I mean, they're, they're truthful questions. They're, they're harder questions. They're not the surface questions about, we'll call it cardio. You know, it's, we're going to ask you some serious questions that hopefully you're going to say, oh, okay, I better, I better think about that a little bit harder. You know, maybe this question I could say, yeah, we can get around that one. This question, we can get around that one. Maybe there's enough questions you go, well, wait a minute, we're like completely at odds here, right? And we're going to ask those questions. And so at the end of this process, because of the depth of the questions that are inside this book, and, and um, you're going to be able to come up with a, a summation of, okay, I really like you, but... There's this red flag, there's this red flag. I don't think I can live with that one. Or, man, we are really compatible. You seem like a good person, and I seem like a good person. And we've explored it through the, all, all, the, all the, the different questions that we have inside this book. Okay? And we've had to, and that's a promise you make to yourself. You say, we're going to do this. We're going to go through the exercises. We're not going to fluff them over because they're a little harder for us to answer. We don't want to look at that. It's really important that you do. And so this is a huge book for preventative maintenance. It's a huge book for creating a, a, a lasting, enduring partnership. One that's meaningful and fulfilling for you, for, your, for possibly your future children or your children now, your, your, your family, extended families. There's so much that, that matters, right, to your real life. If all your energies are spent dealing with constant relationship struggle because you've chosen, you know, badly, you've made some wrong decisions, uh, it's hard for you to move ahead in your life. It's hard for you to find a spiritual connection. It's hard for you to find any kind of a connection, a direction, anything, because your energy is being pulled back to trying to struggle with this relationship. So this hopefully will take that out. It gives you a, a process that makes a difference over the long term. Right? And then that's got to be good for you. Let's face it, it's got to be good for you. If you're happier in your relationship, you're pulling together in, a, in the same direction, you both care about the children that you have, you both are invested in their, their outcome, you're not struggling with a blended family where I don't really care too much about your kids, you don't really care too much about mine. Um, you know, it's just it's a better way to go. And we start with one family. And that one kind of hangs together. And then maybe it starts with a community and some more of those hang together. And then it, it matters, it hits your town. And they start changing their attitudes. These marriage vows that we say, and they just wind up being meaningless. That has to change. We have to start taking the words we vow to more seriously. And if enough of that happens, we start changing communities and cities and we change our society. Just think of all the people you know that have struggled with divorces and lawyers' bills and heartache and and material possessions and I mean love lost and go down the list, right? This is a major issue. This book will really help, and that's my hope. Michael, you're really good. That's cool. No. 
Like I really think you come from your heart and you said that I might have more clarity. I mean, we each have our own gift and our own personal reasons and yours is really uh, deep. It's very heartfelt. And so my next question would be, why do you think or do you think it was good that it was co-authored by a male and a female? Well, I mean, I get to that, but I mean, just listening to your last response okay. to mine, there's a part in here that we wrote about the voices of the children, the right. souls of the children. And, and I think it's a really um, relevant because they seem to, to not have a voice. They, they don't get heard in all of the hurt that happens when relationships, wrong people get together. And um, it's very meaningful in there. And so having been one of those kids, right. and, and um, I think if you read it, you'll, you'll understand what I'm saying. It's, it's probably going to bring a tear to your eye. Yeah, which was interesting because <clears throat> my parents didn't divorce. And at the time that your parents divorced, okay, there wasn't a lot of, of divorced kids in your class, were there not? Yeah, it was relatively uncommon back then. It seems like it's uh, it's infectious these days. It's some kind of a disease or whatever, right? And that's what it is. Essentially, all these broken families and kids growing up and struggling with other people being brought into their life and yeah. everything that they know. I mean, as parents, our job is to provide love and a safe environment for our children. That's paramount. And there's a chapter in here that says, you know, it's if once you have children, it's not about you anymore. It really isn't. Okay, now you've got a major commitment here. So there's a whole thing in here about should you even have kids, right? Think that one yeah. through. Like if you're bringing them in, your responsibility to love these children, to provide a safe home, a safe environment for them to grow up, teach them, you know, the better morals that you're capable of. That's your biggest responsibility, right? It's not to bring kids into the world and break up and have new men come into their lives or new women come into their lives. It's, it's not about you anymore, and you need to sort that one through before you have them. That's a really good point, because when Michael was a teenager, that happened to him, and my, my um, experience was teaching was in high school, and so when I went to school or you went, there would maybe be one or two people that went through divorces. Now, it's one or two students that come uh, from a family that hasn't divorced. So it's a huge thing. And as a parent, can you even afford to have children? That's a big one. It's just not about the love, but can you take care of them financially? It'll, it'll make you ask those questions yeah. with your partner. You'll be informed. It won't be like you've just, when I was young and I, and I had a brother-in-law that uh, I'd never had a dog before. And he said, oh, this Irish setter of his just had pups. You'd love it. Well, I didn't even think about it. And I bought this dog. And two years later, I had to give it away. It just wasn't what I thought, you know. But it was my own lack of attention. I like that. Right? Because you know what people will say to me, I want a baby. I'll go, you know what, why not get a plant and see if you can look after the plant before you have a baby. Yeah. Okay, it's true. Right. Okay, so the next one is, what do you think uh, was the benefit of a female and a male co-authoring? Well, I think an example that one of your book signings, Jude came back and told me a story. And um, I think it's how the different sexes look at a relationship. But you had said that there was a couple walking by the mall, by the bookstore, and the woman wanted to come over, a young woman, and wanted to come over and check out the book. And the guy just grabbed her arm and wouldn't let her. And so you came back and told me the story from a woman's perspective, and you saw that that was really controlling by that guy. And this woman must be, you know, controlled in some kind of a, you know, weaker whatever partner in there and my first reaction to that was that guy is the biggest dumbass and he don't even see it he thinks right now he's young he's full of testosterone and he's controlling that person so he's happy all that's leading to is an unhappy partner who in 20 years from now is going to take half of everything he has and leave him and he's going to go what the hell just happened and so that's two different guys two different 
people, a male and a female, looking at the same situation in a different way. And I would have said to him, you let that woman go over there, right? You be supportive of her need for personal growth, and you understand this process better because it matters to you. You might not see it today, but it does, right? It matters. So there's different perspectives on the way men and, and women see the world. There just is. And I don't care if that's controversial. There just is. And it's nice to have a balanced point of view. Sandra and I, during the writing of the book, discussed many of the items that are in here and came to a satisfactory negotiation that, okay, I still get my point across, she gets her point across, and we're making you think from both points of view. It isn't okay just to sit in your own. You've got to be able to see what's going on in that other person because otherwise you're going to say, I never saw that coming. And it's not a good thing when you say that. I never saw that coming. It's like, all right. <laughs> right. No, I think that's really good because it's. I, I like the word negotiation because it's not about compromising, it's negotiation. And actually there was one chapter, and I'm not even going to tell you because that's a secret, where the one chapter, and we've put it, is that this is a totally different uh, way of approaching this chapter because Michael wrote it in his way, what his philosophy and belief and perception was, and I did it in mine. So we agreed to have different points of view, uh, and that I think that was a really um, prevalent chapter to show that you've got to be able to um, allow the other person to share what they need to share. Okay, and do you believe there was divine support um, at any times, divine intervention and support um, for this book? Well, for me personally, there, there's no question because Sandra has called me a wordsmith. I never even understood what that word meant before I started writing this book. But there were times during the composition of this book that, as I was, oftentimes Sandra would um, write down the sentences that I was trying to explain from my point of view. And, and what would happen was it wasn't even me saying it. The words were coming and it was forming a... a constructive sentence, you know, a legible sentence, and um, at the end of it I'm going, whoa, uh, did I, wow, that's cool, I like how that sounds, but it wasn't me. So in my mind, the book is, is, is was divine intervention, and, and uh, divine recognizes the same kind of problem that's going on, I'm sure, and, and much broader of you even than we do. So I was appreciative for the help because forming clearly structured sentences that make sense with a minimal amount of words is not easy. At least it wasn't for me. So I could use all the help I could get. So, yes. Excellent. Okay. So I think that's it. Do you have anything before I do the thing about where they can get the book or how you're feeling about it? Any last? Last minute things you want to well, say? Well, you know what? I'm gonna, again, this is going to be controversial, but I don't care. Um, because of the devastation of divorce, I think that the laws need to be changed. My, and I'm putting it out there in case the right person can hear this, someone who can make change and it makes sense to them. If you willingly fool around in um, a married person's relationship, if you know they're married and you fool around and you break that family up, you should be held liable for damages, costs, legally. You should not ever be able to break a family up and walk away financially better off. Taking, sharing half the assets of that family with, and you've done nothing, nothing at all except break a family up. So, personally, that's what I would like to see. And I mean, right now in this society, we talk about, you scratch that guy's, car you owe him. You make a little dent in his bumper. Any darn thing you can think of, you're responsible. You're legally liable. Now, you can go in and break up a marriage, a family, hurt everything beyond what you're even compre comprehending, and walk away better off? That's completely wrong. Completely wrong. And if you're a person who's the bad person in that relationship, and it's in this book, it'll tell you how to protect yourself early. If you're a person who's in that relationship and you're the one that's fooling around or you've become a, 
alcoholic and a gambler or whatever it is that you can think of, right? I don't reckon it's fair that you walk away with 50-50. I don't reckon that's fair, okay? And there's something in here that covers that early on. Because if I ask you, and I say we're just young and we're in love, and I say, look, would you ever fool around in me? Of course you're going to say no. And you're going to ask me, would you ever fool around? Of course I'm going to say no. All right, let's sign a contract stating that, a charter of love, we call it, right? Or part of what that says is, if you ever do do that, you're going to agree, we both agree, that you're not going to walk away with 50-50. You're not going to break this family up and take half of everything away. Because there's a whole bunch more that goes on with that. When you do that, you take away half of it and, you, and a new partner comes into your life. The inheritance that you might want to leave for your children could go to somebody else's family that doesn't deserve to have any part of that inheritance. Right. A lot of things happen. Okay, It's covered in this book, I'm telling you. Yeah. So, yeah, I hope the right person hears that and enough people get behind it. It makes perfect sense in my mind. Right. Thank you. Well, no, that's a really good point. And for me, um, I'm a member <clears throat> of the Divorce Resource Committee in Alberta. Okay, And... Um, Another thing, I'm a member of the Parent Alienation Group, and Lisa Lynch did a, an incredible um, YouTube story about all the men that um, are having a hard time right now with this parent alienation. So hopefully out there, if you're going through it, a lot of grandparents are even fighting right now just to be able to see their children. It's a crazy, crazy society, and it starts with, what is your choice, what is your decision? So. What I would really um, ask you to do, if you enjoy this, is to subscribe to our YouTube channel and get back to us if you would like to be interviewed, anybody that um, has done the book, done the exercises, and has made the change, okay? And you can look on Amazon, you can go to Friesen Press on the YouTube, it shows you where you can purchase the book. It's going to come out on audio uh, soon. I think I've got everything. It's in hardcover, softcover, um, ebook, and then in. Um, we're really excited about the audio part of it now, too. Actually, some of the people that have purchased the books, hardcover or softcover, have contacted me and said, When's the audio coming out? Because that's so good. They want to be driving and listening to it or doing this stuff. So. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. Uh, and we have now shared uh, where we come from and have patience because this is new for me, the whole thing of YouTube. I love social media, but there's a process to doing it. And so we'll be having more um, discussions and uh, interviews on um you, on this YouTube and, and then there's one last thing for people that do invest in this book, and that's what it is. It's an investment, trust me. Um, there's one more tool that we have a toolbox in here, okay. and there's a tool that, that, that when you get in contact with us, we will send it to you, and it's a decision making tool. And it's a process by how to make uh, negotiated decisions that matter. And I know that can be very difficult. You know, sometimes people just struggle with making a decision, and the bigger they are, the harder they are to make, uh, because you're not certain. <clears throat> and so, get in contact with us, and we will send you that tool. It didn't make it into the book. It came by divine intervention later, but uh, it's a bonus, all right? So, yeah, thank you. I forgot yeah. about it. Yeah. And another thing is, we do have some really good self-discovery tools. And again, personally, looking at yourself, as a couple, the compatibility, even from a business point of view, even in a family. Because I find there's a lot of families that they have the dynamics in there. I find especially, which is interesting, is siblings are like jealous of each other and they're creating a lot of drama. Like I had not seen that until maybe the last maybe 10 years of my life. That just wasn't in my my consciousness, okay? And so we can really help the parents to understand or those siblings to understand. Because again, it's all drama and whatever, and nobody can really move ahead with their own personal soul growth. And you know, that's another thing, right? Is, is I know we're getting long-winded here, but 
This book should be in every high school. In my opinion, every oh, high school goodness. class should take a week, go into a hypothetical situation about a relationship, and use this book. And even if they don't have a partner, and maybe, maybe not for who knows how long, at some point in the back of their mind, this book is still going to be there, and they'll go, wait a minute, we need to go backwards to this book, and we'll figure out if this relationship makes sense. See, that's good you brought it up, because I think I forgot to ask you that question. Yeah. How about who do you think? So it could be in high schools, where else would you Oh, say? it's every everybody that you know. Everybody that's in, that every, every parent should have this for a gift for their, you know, teenage children, or older, right? I mean, if... If you're struggling, let's say you're a, a, a parent and you go, I'm not really sure I like my son's choice in partners. Get him this book, right? Say, here's a gift and it's not on you. You don't have to be the bad guy. Let them go through this book and they'll sort it out. And like I said to you before, if it isn't the right partner and you have too many red flags, put on your running shoes and don't just walk. You run. Right. Save yourself a lot of grief down the road. And that whole self-discovery process even helps you to kind of find out more about yourself in ways that maybe what kind of a career you want, all kinds of things, because it's a discovery of self. Okay. Okay, okay we're long with okay. it. I, I hope you stay with us because you guys take care. Okay.